All right, so we're about to check in. It's our 56th in a row, which is impressive, guys. Um, we're going to check in with uh, some guest videos, but I wanted to throw the be right a, a, one of the most recent ones I have, as was pointed out, it doesn't have the new, the brand new CL group on here. So what this is, is just the meteorite classification table. And it basically is a scientific breakdown of, of how meteorites are classified. And it's, uh, I wouldn't say every, it is ever evolving, ever changing uh, as new science is learned, as different meteorites are discovered and can be grouped together. So what goes on for some time as an ungrouped, maybe it's an achondrite ungrouped, then they get five of them or whatever. And now it's a grouplet. So they, so they create a CL group with these ones that match. So uh, I figure every, every week or every few weeks, we should pull this up, take a look at it. And, and if anyone has any questions or comments about uh, meteorite classification. All right, so here we go. Uh, is it Japara? Do we have any other guesses? Bragan? It is Japara. You are correct, Mike. Nice. Mike's good. On it. Cool. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, that's a nice piece of it. Yeah. So I'm going to snap this in half and sell both pieces unless someone wants a whole damn thing. Thank you, Grant. This is actually my first lunar individual as opposed to a slice. This is in cross-polarized reflected light. I was simply too curious to leave it without a window. I think no. I made a right choice in polishing one side. Wow. wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. That it's is beautiful. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I think this Funny. is a surface melt. Wow. But I want to I want to let you know that not only are you helping people, you know, right here on the Knowledge Bolide crew, but your impacts are felt around the world, dude. Someone took an a uh, Agu doll and turned it from that into that. So, wow. Nice. So Carlos, yeah, Carlos in Brazil, he, he's in a lot of the meteorite. As those are crystals, those are probably um, uh, in, impurities or in, uh, inclusions that go along the, the crystal faces. Faces, yeah. Yeah. This one right here is named after the discoverer of palisites. Palascova? Exactly. Oh, it is? It's Palaskova? Yep. Wow. Beautiful. And wow. this is a gorgeous, gorgeous slice because nice. it, it has color. It has crazy color. Do you see that green in the middle there? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah. I can see the uh -huh. green. Oh, you yeah. Got oranges, Fire. greens, ambers. Wow. Yeah. Just gorgeous. Look at that green down there. Beauty. Yeah, so I don't want to blind you guys. I'll take this away now. Yeah, but this is a, let me see, it's a 19.8 gram slice. Uh, an iron, um, it is. <laughs> oh, vanilla. Nice. Yep, 65 grams. Now I, I, having this in my hands, I understand how an iron, I guess, is an iron compared to anything else you would run across on your property or anywhere else. It's super cool. So that <laughs> explains a lot, but it's, wow. That's Ooh, all I got. That's a say. nice sculpted piece. That looks awesome. Yeah. I, 
I can't stop touching it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Randy Tatum in Richmond, Hello. Virginia, and I wanted to show you a thin section of a uh, impact rock breccia from uh, Sudbury, Ontario, that I collected. I had it made into a thin section with, and so. The colorful one, uh, grains on the left, I believe, is olivine, and on the right, the kind of darker gray is uh, quartz. This is this is erg check. Mm. Wow, very this coarse it, grain. Yeah, I wonder. Wow, is erg check like? A hot zone for crazy achondrites. <laughs> well, I, I I think what happened is like there's also um, on the way to uh, to hunt erg check, they stopped and pulled over and found some lunar. Mm -hmm. So maybe the area hasn't been hunt like like Ben Fistler said earlier. Uh, it's never hunted out, you know. Oh, yeah. um, so, so this is NWA sixty seven oh four. Ooh. It is a my third ungrouped achondrite. This is just a two and a half gram slice. Nice. Um, hmm. But it's pretty cool. I like it. So this is going to be one of those uh, impossible to guess. Hey, guess what this is? It's too big to be Tucson ring, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cape York. I got. I gotta uh, stop you there. No, Poma, you, you, Poma. You, you, no, no. You Topher nailed it first. First guess. Bullseye. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I. I, uh, I was so. I was so jealous of Mike Kelly's piece of Tucson ring that I had to reach out and <laughs> get my own piece of Tucson ring. <gasps> That's this awesome. is. Uh, wow. I got it from John Higgins. Um, he actually he gave me this awesome COA for it. Uh, let's see. So yeah, uh, he got it from Matt Morgan and then Travis Rouser and then to me on that date, which is awesome. And That's then so he, cool. he even included. That's sweet. That's Alan Ooh. Lang's Alan COA. Lang. Cool. Mm. So this is it right here. Um, a brick from the museum. And then you can see down in here, there's a bunch of little spheroids in there. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's wicked cool. cool. Uh -huh. I'm still waiting to get a chunk of his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's... This cool little LL3 chondroid I got from Timo, who actually found it. I love the colors and contrast. Wow. Beautiful. I'm sorry, we have to pause it. I know Damian's going to talk and we don't want to talk over him. So let's just get it out of our systems. <laughs> Damian has done an amazing job of uh, leveraging the reflected cross polarized light uh, mm -hmm. technique. That is a stunning photo. Yeah. Yeah. That his photography is amazing. It is. Uh, wonderful contrast showing the black rims around all those guys, the, the sparse, very black matrix. It's it's there. That, huh? big, that big one right there looks like Imalac to me, but it's not. This is Quijibo. It's something. It's, it's what, <laughs> I, what was it? I always call it Quijibo. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Oh, Kajinga. How do you say that? I just say Kajinga. Oh, nice. So I have six right, point eight. Of course, everything is serialized. I had an Esquel once that I was using to show people at an event, and this one girl, and stupid me, you really shouldn't take anything you're not willing to have someone break. Yeah. And I showed it to her, and she dropped it, and it broke in half. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Oh. It was Esquel, like something like less than 10 grams. It wasn't super big, but I was so frustrated, I told her to keep it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's almost you don't want to be reminded, but oh boy, beautiful! Oh yeah, Ooh. nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, wow, it's a pretty sweet slice. Uh, that is beautiful. The little one's beautiful. Is it fully crusted? 
Oh yeah, yeah, it's an individual. It, it's complete. Uh, there's yeah. another little complete. Oh yeah, beautiful. Wow. It's amazing how good the crust is on those things since they've been on the ground since 1912. I have found some that look like they fell a half hour ago. Hey, hey, Mike, I got a micro for you. <laughs> I'm gonna put you that, I'll put that aside for you, Mike. <laughs> Does anyone have a uh, venture a guess as to what we're looking at? Um, and where is it from again? Russia. Oh, uh -huh. reported witnessed fall that wasn't recovered till years later. Uh, Zarov. There you have it. Wow. Zarev. Yep. Oh, cool. That's yeah. awesome, man. It's yeah. A big piece. Yeah, it's almost well. It's under a kilo, but it's it's a pretty good pretty good hunk of it and it's gorgeous on the interior but this is going to be beautiful oh so, it's a nice generous sized piece too yeah i i had to get it so i you know thought it'd be a good idea to you know introduce them to meteorites and i got some um small pieces of nwa869 and agudal um from topher but what I did is I basically just put them in a Ziploc bag with the description. And, you know, they're, they're small pieces, that, you know, under five grams each. Um, and they were, like, really over the moon. It's like uh, being able to really get people to uh, to appreciate that and, and learn. And, and, you know, like where I was, like, four years ago, it's like, I didn't think you could own meteorites, you know. <laughs> and it's like, here's, here, here's a couple of them. And it's like, you know, I also, I also said... Don't blame me if this starts a really expensive hobby for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The, the first That's one's that. free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're slinging rocks on the corner over here. <laughs> That's wonderful, yeah. wonderful work, Bruce. Um, and, and who knows how many seeds you've planted and those kids that will be touched. And uh, maybe one of them will be... Uh, a meteorite classifier or somebody walks on Mars or just an extremely well-educated layperson whose kids know about uh, who their kids and their grandkids know about meteorites. We, we were getting lost in some conversation right there, but we got to tie this up. <laughs> we were talking about hunting meteorites and, uh, and, and all kinds of uh, samples we have at labs and whatnot, but we have some good stuff coming up. So stay tuned week after week. I hope you enjoy I hope you learn. Thanks, Meteorite Knowledge Bolide crew. I appreciate everyone's time. Thanks, guys. Hi, everybody. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.